So let's talk about calorimetry. Okay, and this is what we use in chemistry to measure heat flow. Okay, we want to measure the heat flowing from one object to another, um, the heat released by a reaction or absorbed by a reaction. Okay, and the idea is that one object or substance gains heat and the other one loses heat. Okay, so the key to this whole section is that heat lost equals negative heat gained. Okay, we need the negative because heat lost is a negative quantity and heat gained is a positive quantity. So in order to make those two things true, you need a negative sign in there. Okay, so this is sort of the key point here that we're going to be looking at when we talk about calorimetry. So last year I'm sure you did some coffee cup calorimetry. You take a styrofoam cup because it's a good insulator and in it you put some liquid. Um, the, it's often water but it doesn't have to be. The only thing that you need to know is that you must know the specific heat capacity of that water. Okay. So we need to know, so for like water, we know its specific heat capacity. That's why it's a, a good thing to use. Okay? Um, and the idea is that we're going to put something into this water. Okay? It could be a substance that reacts with this water, or it could be like a hunk of metal. Okay? So I'm going to take some metal, and I'm going to, let's say this metal is hot, and I'm going to throw it in this water, which is like room temperature. Well, when the metal goes in, it's hot, so it's going to lose heat, and the water is going to gain heat. However much heat the metal loses, the water is going to gain. Okay, and the most important thing here now is that the final temperature of this water and the final temperature of this metal will be the same. So since water has a pretty high specific heat capacity, and metals are pretty low, you know, if this metal might start hot and this, this water at room temperature, the temperature is only going to go up a little bit. Okay, the water will be warmer and now the metal will be warm. And the, when you have system situations like this, the general idea that you're going to do is that MC delta T is minus MC delta T. Okay, and one half of this equation is for your metal and one half of this equation is for your water. Okay, so on the left, we would be talking about the mass of the metal, the specific heat of the metal, the change in temperature of the metal. Okay, the mass of the water, the mass of the specific heat of the water, and the change in temperature of the water. Okay, so that's a pretty simple thing, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, or the thing that we add might actually react with the water. Like, what happens if I throw some sodium in there? That'd be cool. It would react, right? It would um, react pretty violently, and it would release heat. Well, where does that heat go? Well, our, our calorimeter is covered, so the heat goes into the water. So we don't say the sodium releases heat. We say the reaction that occurs releases heat, and it's absorbed by the water. So in this case, we would say Q for the reaction that takes place is minus MC delta T. Okay, and keep in mind that all this stuff over here is for the water. Okay, it's the water that's changing temperature. And what we'll do is we'll get this to come out in joules. Okay, we usually though, we want to change it to kilojoules per mole and the moles are of the metal. Okay, so we want to know if obviously if I used more sodium, I'd get more heat. So when it's in joules, we call it Q. When it's in kilojoules per mole, we give it a different name. Okay, and this is called delta H. Okay, Q and delta H are really the same thing. It's just a question of units. Okay, this is properly called the change in enthalpy. Okay, enthalpy. But a uh, lots of times we just call it the heat of reaction. Okay, so heat of reaction. The amount of heat that's released or absorbed when the reaction occurs. Okay, so a different kind of calorimeter. It's called the bomb calorimeter. Just so you know, it sounds way cooler than it really is. It's just not that exciting. 
but this is something you would use um, when you're doing reactions with gases at high pressures or like if you want to burn something, so like a combustion reaction. What you do is in this little container here, you seal the thing you want to burn, okay, and then it's set up so that you can pump oxygen into it, okay, and then when it reacts, um, these little wires get the reaction to, gives it a little spark to get it react, right, your activation energy, and this measures the change in temperature, okay. So this is kind of the same thing, but in the heat of reaction, in this case, is equal to minus heat capacity times change in temperature. This is generally called the calorimeter constant. Okay, Each calorimeter has a different constant associated with it. It includes the amount of water that's in there, how well it insulates, it kind of includes everything. Okay, So it's given as joules or kilojoules per degree Celsius. So that when you multiply it by change in temperature, you get joules or kilojoules out. Okay, and I'll show you an example of that also. So bomb calorimeter sounds cool, but basically you do a little spark, you don't see anything, you open up and you're like, oh, the reactions is done. Woohoo. So let's say I take 50 grams of aluminum, okay, and we're gonna say our aluminum is at 150 degrees. So I must have heated it up in something pretty hot. I'm gonna drop it into hundred milliliters of water. Okay, and the water starts at 27 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I put these in, I put the cover on, and I stir it, and the temperature goes from 27 degrees Celsius up to 31. And I want to know what's the specific heat capacity of aluminum. So I've got two things going on here. The metal is losing heat, and the water is gaining heat. So this is going to be an MC delta T for the metal is minus mc delta t for the water. So the mass of the metal I've given as 50. The specific heat capacity of the metal we're trying to find. The temperature of the metal, now its initial temperature is 150 and its final is 27, or 31. So remember we always do final minus initial. So 31 minus 150. Okay, and this is going to equal negative. The mass of the water well, 100 milliliters is the same as 100 grams for water. Um, let's go ahead and do this one in joules. So the specific heat capacity of water is 4.184. And the change in temperature of the water is 31 minus 27, or 4. Okay? So if you do out your math here, you're going to get, let's see, negative 59.50 times C is negative 1673.6. The specific heat capacity is going to come out to be 3.56 joules per gram degrees Celsius. And that's how you do a calorimetry problem when you're just kind of throwing a metal into water and there's no reaction taking place. The metal loses heat and the water gains heat. So let's look at one where there's an actual reaction taking place. The reaction H2 plus Cl2 gives you 2HCl. And let's go ahead and study it in a bomb calorimeter. All right. So Q of reaction is going to equal to minus the calorimeter constant times the delta T. Okay. And it says the calorimeter constant is 9.33 kilojoules per degree Celsius. And the change in temperature looks like it's 29.82 minus 20. So I'm going to go with 9.82. So the Q, the heat released, okay, is minus 91.6 kilojoules. But we want to report that in terms of kilojoules per mole of stuff I reacted. So I take one gram of hydrogen, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to moles. 2.02, 0.495 moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to take this 0.495 moles, and what I get is negative 185 kilojoules per mole. This is a value that I could probably look up in a table somewhere. Every time I do this reaction, I should get this amount of heat when I use one mole of hydrogen. 
So those are calorimetry problems, and I'll, I'll have you practice a few, but I think you did this mostly last year, although you probably didn't do bomb calorimetry problems.